The Voyage at Holiday World is a design and engineering marvel. This attraction boasts some of the craziest stats of any roller coaster ever built. It is the second longest wooden roller coaster with over 6,000 feet of track, but it has only one lift hill. And among traditional wooden roller coasters, it is the tallest and fastest in the world. However, there are plenty of record-breaking roller coasters which don't offer elite ride experiences. Voyage does not fit into that category. It has an outstanding layout with a ridiculous amount of airtime and breakneck pacing that somehow only gets stronger as the ride goes on. This masterpiece of a roller coaster was designed by the Gravity Group and was only the second coaster they ever created. In this review, we will cover the entire ride experience, from the massive layout to the trains, queue, and ride operations. After dispatching, the train slowly rolls out of the station, then dips down and to the left, at which point it engages the chain lift hill. This lift hill is 159 feet tall, so you have a decent amount of time to enjoy the view on the way up. You can see much of the park sort of behind and to the left of you, as well as Thunderbird, Holiday World's B&M wing coaster, directly in front of you. Plus, you have a nice view of the woods which you are about to dive into. At the top of the lift hill, Holiday World has placed a bunch of flags, which is the last thing you pass by before you plunge down the 154 foot, 66 degree first drop. This drop is by far best experienced in the back row, where it gives a good amount of floater airtime. Then the train traverses two large camelback airtime hills back to back, the second of which turns and very slightly banks to the left, giving a hint of laterals. These camelbacks both feel similar in terms of airtime, with sustained floater airtime that get you up and out of your seat. However, this might be the weakest airtime on the entire ride. Don't get me wrong, it still gets you out of your seat and for a decent amount of time, so these are still two good elements and are reminiscent of an out and back hyper coaster. Plus, in the valley in between these two elements, you pass underneath the track of Thunderbird, so if you are really lucky, you might get to watch Thunderbird's train pass right over your head. After the second airtime hill, the train plunges into a tunnel, the first of eight times you will travel through a tunnel according to Holiday World even though it's pretty much seven times by my count. Then the track turns to the right and slightly dips down into a second tunnel. After this, you rise up into the third camelback of Voyage and the final element of the outward leg. This airtime hill actually gives the strongest airtime of the first three camelbacks on the attraction in the back row, even if it isn't nearly as sustained. I say this because in the back car, you sort of get whipped over this camelback in a way that the front and middle of the train don't experience. However, the airtime isn't as sustained because this hill is a lot smaller than the first two. This is due to the fact that Voyage has actually been climbing the terrain this entire time and at this point is substantially higher than where it was at the base of the lift hill. However, you would have no idea because of how Voyage's pacing simply does not relent in the middle section of the ride, the Spaghetti Bowl. The Spaghetti Bowl is 20 seconds of non-stop chaos at the edge of Voyage's footprint. The track snakes around in every direction, delivering laterals, airtime, and positive Gs, with a heavy focus on the laterals. It starts out by ascending out of the third tunnel of the layout, and then the train traverses an S hill which gives a quick pop of airtime, but more so a strong dose of lateral forces. Then the train drops down again and twists to the left, giving even stronger airtime and laterals. In fact, that is the theme for the entire spaghetti bowl. Quick pops of airtime combined with directional changes resulting in strong lateral forces and a hint of roughness for an out of control feeling the entire time. Voyage then hauls through a banked left turn, partway through it quickly unbanks, giving more ejector airtime and then banks back to the left and quickly back to level. The train then dips down a few feet for another quick pop of airtime and then enters Voyage's first 90 degree bank turn, this to the left. Now these are unique elements for a traditional wooden roller coaster, but honestly, I find them to be possibly the weakest elements of the entire layout. They don't offer much in forces beyond a hint of positive Gs, but still, they are fun elements and don't let the pacing suffer. Then, you twist to the right and enter another 90 degree turn. Right after this, there is a twisted double down that gives more fantastic airtime and laterals. This leads into another tunnel. Then, you climb up into the mid-course break run, which may hit a little, but I find that it doesn't hinder the ride experience very much. Now, on most coasters, this would be the end of the ride. However, on Voyage, it is only halfway done, which is absolutely crazy to think about. Plus, the rest of the layout is all downhill from this point, meaning the pacing will only continue to get stronger and more out of control. Following the mid-course is the famous triple down. There are three consecutive drops in a tunnel, each growing in size and strength. The first two basically feel like any other airtime pop on the ride, but the last gives what I would call ejector airtime, and it is decently sustained as well. Plus, the airtime pops are in quick succession while in a dark tunnel, giving it another unique feel. The best way I can describe this element is that you just feel yourself being pulled downwards three times in quick succession in the dark. 
plus the last drop is sustained enough that you are out of your seat for a decent amount of time, then you are slammed back into your seat. This is probably the highest moment of positive G's of the entire layout, and it is following arguably the strongest airtime of the entire layout. So you get these contrasting forces in the dark. And that is how Voyage's second half kicks off. You then exit out of the massive tunnel and into a larger airtime hill that runs through the middle of the metal support structure of one of the camelbacks. It of course has sustained airtime. You immediately then enter another hill of the same size, but this one is unbanked and turns to the right. Then you fly through an SO which also twists on the way down. Both of these elements give an excellent combination of airtime and laterals. After that you cross back through the structure and traverse another S hill. Next you bank to the left and step up into another 90 degree turn which crosses to the other side of the lift hill. There's a little step down and a left turn before the iconic S hill that crosses right in front of the station. This is one of the most violent parts of the ride. You get thrown into your straight and then into the other side of the car. It is one of the best moments of the ride. Then you dive into another tunnel. This one runs right along the station in queue. From the queue you can see the train haul right past the station. You then bank to the right and climb out of the tunnel. This leads into another violent S hill, very similar to the first but in the opposite direction. Then you pop up and traverse one final turn to the right which leads into the brakes, ending the 90 second journey that is the voyage. That is the craziest part of this ride, from first drop to brakes, it has 90 seconds of prime ride time, almost double other elite coasters like Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa and Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. And there are no dead points in the layout. The elements fly at you one after another, never letting you catch your breath. And the pacing doesn't suffer either as you are still hauling through the last couple of elements. As I mentioned earlier, Voyage is a statistical monster of a roller coaster. There is only one wooden coaster in the world that is longer than the Voyage, the Beast at Kings Island. However, there are plenty of coasters, both steel and wooden, that are among the longest in the world but don't offer elite ride experiences, like Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land and the Beast, but Voyage is different. It is relentless from start to finish. It seems to defy physics with how well it maintains its pacing all the way through, even with a single lift hill. Of course, the secret is how Gravity Group designed this coaster to travel up a hill on the outward leg of the layout, without it really being noticeable at all. On most coasters, the best elements are at the beginning and then the pacing starts to slow down by the end of the layout. But on Voyage, each section is somehow better than the last and it only gets better as it goes along. It is just mind bending every time I experience this coaster how out of control the return leg is. In the past, Voyage has had a reputation at some points for being a somewhat rough coaster, but in general, Holiday World does a great job of maintaining this massive wooden coaster as they do with all of their wooden roller coasters. This attraction actually does have a steel support structure rather than wooden, which is also a brilliant choice to help limit the maintenance needed on the support structure. Of course, it still has traditional wooden track, so you'd have no idea that the structure is made of steel if you never saw it. I think this coaster honestly has the perfect amount of roughness to just add an extra touch of out of control feeling without feeling like it's jackhammering too much. Voyage is probably going to be a tougher coaster to marathon in terms of fatigue, but that is just as much on this coaster's sheer length and forces, even more than the roughness. Voyage's trains have an unusual backstory to them. When the attraction opened, it operated with three seven-car PTC trains, but Holiday World then planned to purchase the brand new prototype Timberliner trains from Gravity Group, so they sold most of the cars of the original Voyage PTC trains to Darien Lake. But the Timberliner project ran into unexpected delays, so Holiday World took some PTC cars from Raven and put those on Voyage. Then, they eventually just cancelled the Timberliner project altogether. Eventually, Voyage just ended with two six-car PTC trains instead of the original three seven-car trains. In my opinion, that's a downgrade because for one, I like having longer trains because it means more whip over drops in the back row, and second, it is kind of frustrating that Voyage only runs with two trains. This coaster is absolutely massive and hugely popular at Holiday World, but it only runs two trains. Of course, with the operations, they often stack two trains anyway, so maybe it wouldn't make that big of a difference. But still, in an ideal world, three trains would be the norm on Voyage. These PTC trains have individual ratcheting lap bars. Personally, I'm not big of a fan of these restraints, and I much prefer the restraints on GCI's Millennium Flyer trains, for example. I like GCI's restraints better for three reasons. The first is that it is easier to avoid being stapled by ride ops than PTC trains. On GCI's trains, you can kind of scoot forward in your seat to avoid being stapled much easier than on PTC trains. Secondly, GCI trains come down much higher on the rider's body, with the lap bar almost contacting perfectly on the midsection. 
PTC's lap bars, on the other hand, contact a rider's legs, sort of stapling them to the seat. Finally, GCI's restraints are super easy to hold up because they have handlebars, I guess I would call them, whereas PTC trains are far more difficult to hold up because they don't have the same feature. Overall, it is possible to avoid being stapled on voyage, especially if the ride ops are being generous, but during the layout, you have to work to keep that lap bar from coming down further with a combination of roughness and some intense valleys. This ride is located in the Thanksgiving section in the back of Holiday Worlds, and you have to walk through either the 4th of July section or the Christmas section. It doesn't really matter which way you go because it takes almost the same amount of time either way if you're going at rope drop. Then, both paths join up and you are greeted by the giant Thanksgiving sign underneath Voyage's break run. The location this coaster is in actually allows you to see it from a road outside of the park, and from this angle, you can really see the hill it sits on. One thing to take note of is that you cannot see how long the wait is for this coaster. Most of the switchbacks take place underneath the station which you can't see from the outside. Also the employees will block off the switchbacks when the line is shorter so it will make it appear like the line is longer even though it isn't. These switchbacks are also really crowded and most of it is enclosed in sort of like a basement so the air is pretty musty and there's not much air circulation. The station is also a mess because they let in so many people at a time and it gets extremely crowded and confusing. Voyage has only two trains and would stack them almost every single time. On the Voyage that means really slow dispatches. We were timing the dispatches and virtually every single one was at least 3 or 4 minutes. We got lucky though because the park was decently empty on the day we visited so the most we had to wait was 50 minutes. That is my only real critique of the ride, that unfortunately despite all the praise I'd heard about the Holiday World operations, they were mediocre at best. I don't mean to criticize or call out the employees running the ride, but unfortunately that was our experience. At the very least, they didn't staple us on most of our rides, so that was nice. The last thing to make sure you do is get into line at least 20 to 30 minutes before the park closes because they will shut down the queue way before the park closes in an effort to have everyone out of the queue before park closing. We ran into this problem and we don't want you to experience the same thing. At most parks you just have to time up what you want your last ride of the night to be so that you will get in line before the park closes. At Cedar Point for example we will make sure we get in line for Steel Vengeance around 5 minutes before park closing time. But at Holiday World, you have to make sure you get in line for your last ride about half an hour before the park closes. It is an understandable policy, but can be a little frustrating sometimes, because to my knowledge, they don't publish what time they will close the queues. Overall, Voyage is an absolutely insane roller coaster, and arguably the best wooden roller coaster in the entire world. And according to the 2023 Vogue Coasters poll, it is the best wooden roller coaster in the world. This thing is one of the great coaster experiences, with its ridiculously long layout which dwarfs all other elite coasters, but it never loses its steam or bite at any time throughout the entire layout. So for its final rating, I will be giving Voyage at Holiday World a 10 out of 10, and of course I would recommend it to any coaster enthusiast. I would even put Voyage on the short list of roller coasters every enthusiast should ride at some point during their lifetime. That will do it for this review, if you enjoyed this video please consider dropping a like or subscribing. Thank you for watching.